Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, which means peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of The Dean Show, which is a way of life we try to put out there for everyone to see, helping you understand Islam and Muslims. I'd like to thank you for coming to The Source to learn about the most misunderstood way of life in the world today. We're going to be talking about Islam, which simply means surrender and submission to who? To a man, to a monkey, to an elephant, to the sun, to the moon? No, to the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who took care of you when you were in your mother's womb, the one who created everything that's in existence, that's the creator that you submit to, and you set up no partners with him. That's what Islam means. It's very simple. It's very logical. We need you to do something, and that's turn on what? Your reasoning, your logic, your brain, and just listen now. We're going to be bringing on, and it's always a, a pleasant thing when somebody accepts Islam, and we're going to talk about this man's journey and how he ended up accepting Islam, which is practiced by over 1.5 billion people worldwide. You ready for my next guest, Greg Husted? How you doing, Greg? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Thank you for uh, joining us today on The Dean Show. So many people now, we see that even with all the misinformation, with all the negative propaganda, people associating Islam with things blowing up, terrorism, all sorts of misinformation, people are still accepting Islam. Today we're going to be talking about your story and how you ended up coming to Islam. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then we want to hear how you ended up stumbling to Islam. Uh, well, uh, my name is Greg Husted. Um, 23 years old, uh, been raised, born in Chicago, come from a, a Catholic family. My mother is the, the oldest of nine. So uh, growing up, she was pretty liberal with me. I uh, didn't have a very, I guess you could say, Christian upbringing. Uh, I wasn't held on a very tight leash, so I experienced a lot of things uh, firsthand. You know, didn't have a lot of restrictions. Um, so that was that was really mostly. So at what age life. did you accept Islam? Uh, when I was 19, I accepted Islam. It so, was. So uh, you came from a, a predominantly your your household was a, a Christian uh, household. In a sense, I, I would say uh, more of a hippie household. Yeah. You know, my mom was very liberal bringing uh -huh. me up, so there wasn't going to Sunday school or going to church or anything So you like were just that. basically doing what every youth does, just what, going to school, hanging out? and Yeah, you know, high school, you go to school during the week, and then the weekend, you know, you go and cause trouble and try to get away with it. And... Yeah. Okay, so tell us now, how did you end up uh, becoming a Muslim? Um, it was actually the summer I graduated from high school. Uh, I was at a barbecue, and I met a Muslim guy at this barbecue. Uh, wasn't wearing a turban or anything like that. He was actually a tall, white, blonde guy. So he it wasn't an Arab. No, it wasn't an Arab. He looked like like a California surfer dude. Because many people have this misconception when you say Islam, they think about turban, big beard, an Arab somewhere in the yeah. desert. No, that you, wasn't. He was a blonde hair, blue eye. Yeah, blonde looked hair, like he blue eye, about to do some surfing. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we just got to talking about life and the universe. Uh, you know, which at the time I was, you know, very interested in. You know, just kind of talking about you know, existence, you know, and purpose and this kind of thing. Um, and we ended up becoming friends, and I started doing a lot of research on the meanwhile. He ended up moving very close to me. Uh, we hung out a lot. So he would talk to me a little bit, and I'd go out and, and do some research. Uh, you know, I'd try to uh, rebuke some of the things he said. You know, I'd try to see if I could disprove, you know, find a weakness here and there. Uh, but the more I researched, the more uh, the more I learned, and the wider my perspective became of myself and and you know my knowledge and the world. And uh, oh, there is a couple aspects that really attracted me to Islam. Uh, first, historically, uh, it makes a lot of sense, and we can touch base on that a little bit later. But also scientifically, which isn't something you normally see with religion. Usually, you see science and religion oppose each other. In this case, science actually uh, backs up Islam, which I thought was really interesting. Mm -hmm. So how did you, did you, because at that age, 19, nobody, you know, nowadays just to bring up religion or talk about these serious issues like 
you know, what's my purpose in life? You know, why have I been created? Why am I here? The majority of people are consuming, chasing a position, chasing the dollar, something material. But you are, how did you, you know, think about and talk about and end up exploring something a little more serious? Um, that's a funny question. I mean, to know exactly, exactly why it's hard to say, uh, you know, you, we look around these days and we are very conditioned to, you know, go to school, get a job, yada, 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 uh, this kind of thing. Um, but I don't know, it was, you know, sometime during that summer and, and right before that summer that I just kind of had this, this thought in my life or this thought process that, you know, like there's got to be more to life than, you know, just going to school, you know, going to a party, you know, hanging out with people, this kind of stuff. There, there's, there's no, it just doesn't make sense. You know, we're so, we have such high intellect and the fact that we can sit here and have this conversation and talk, I think is a proof for itself that we're created for something besides just following our own desires. Now tell us, uh, being from a Christian background, not really following, did you find yourself at this point, because a lot of times people, even though they don't know about their faith, they end up de defending it just because, you know what, they feel like this is what I was brought into by my parents. Did you feel any inclination to go back to Christianity, to explore further about the teachings of Christianity or any other religion in your uh, time when you were investigating? Yeah, uh, in fact, I, I covered. I tried to cover the scope. You know, I didn't specifically look into Islam, but I would look into. I looked back into Christianity. Uh, you know, I had some some close uh, coworkers who were devout Christians, and you know, I had asked them a lot of questions. I had grown up next to a Jew, Jewish family, so I asked them a little bit about Judaism. Um, looked into Buddhism a little bit um, as well, uh, but you know I would just go down the line as far as just different aspects of the religion, and with each one something would you know one of the religions would get washed away, and the only one that was left standing. Was give us a, give us a, an example. Um, well, for example, there is the uh, idea of blind faith. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, in some beliefs, it's it's said that just believe in it because it is. You can't you can't comprehend this. You know, there's no way. And I can accept the fact that I can't truly comprehend God, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It does it's not logical in my head that God would make something for us. Like if He created us with a purpose, why would He make it hard for us to understand? You know, mm -hmm. like He why wouldn't He make it clear? Uh, and I actually heard a speech, I heard a really good uh, analogy of this, was that if you were a person and you owned a factory and you wanted people to work in your factory, would you just hire these people and put them in your factory? Or would you explain to them what their job is and how to do it and how to do it properly and when to do it? Um, and with Islam, I found these great details on every aspect of life, you know, how to, you know, you know, how to properly pray, you know, how to your conduct with people, every single aspect from macro, you know, big things, social things to little tiny things. Um, this was all covered. So uh, in that aspect, it, it made a lot of sense, whereas a lot of other things, like when I, I asked uh, some of my Christian friends to explain to me the Trinity, I never was able to get uh, a very clear-cut answer. It was, it always seemed to be ambiguous and not, not answer my question exactly uh, to the point. So that didn't fit, that God, what, so you believed in the Creator. Because a lot of times with all the confusion, people just give up. They become agnostic or atheist, and they say, you know what, the heck with all religion, I'm going to just do my own thing. So did you ever come borderline this avenue? Um, that's kind of what I was before. You know, in high school, like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't raised as a devout Christian, so I kind of just, I guess you could say, followed my heart. Um, and this is one of the questions that I, I actually asked the person telling me about Islam. And he said, well, who's to say that your heart knows what's best for you versus the creator who created your heart? Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of got me. And also the fact that, you know, our hearts are, can be corruptible. And, you know, we can have distorted, jaded visions or uh, perspectives of how things work. So who am I to say that I'm the best judge in, in what, uh, how to conduct my life? Mm -hmm. when the Creator uh, is, has it laid out in front of us. So you always did believe that 
it was illogical, it didn't make sense that everything in this creation just created itself, that it just came into being and there wasn't a creator behind this? Yeah, it, it just, I always thought that there was something turning the wheels. And I used to tell people, when people asked me to explain, this was before Islam, what I thought of, of God or, you know, of, you know, a higher power. I said, you know, just as we look in a microscope, you know, we look at the little microorganisms uh, under the lens, they can't really perceive exactly what we are. They may, they may have their function of how to interact with us and know how to do that, but they're not going to be able to comprehend, you know, you know, who is 